Welcome. And Thank we want to take uh, we want to take this opportunity to dig into your mindset, your experiences and learn about leadership. My first question is you titled this from tactics to strategy. What do you mean by that? Well, I I I, I mean uh, by that uh, the following. We get, we are living in a very uh, interdependent world where things that happen here have consequences there and things that happen there has consequences here. And uh, when you have that complexity, I think that uh, to act tactically is a waste of time. And you have to have always in mind a strategy and within that strategy, put the tactics movements. But uh, as you see today in the world, the leadership of the world, the most important leaders, is very difficult to see or to know what is their strategy. And you see them acting tactically, uh, one day saying something, maybe the following day, something which is uh, contrary what it was the day before. And we have several le uh, leaders today that we know them by name, and we see it on television every day, which uh, you have the sentiment that uh, they don't have any sense of a strategy, that they are just people who act uh, tactically. And to lead the world today with the problems that we have, the problems which are, some of them, impossible to be solved by one country alone, most of the, most of the problems we have have to be solved by cooperation, and uh, to cooperate, you have to establish a, a strategy which is uh, necessary. I, uh, let me put an example which for me uh, uh, is, is very clear. I was uh, introduced to the president of China uh, when he was secretary general of the Communist Party in China, still was not president, it was a period of time of transition. And uh, well, I happened to be in Beijing, and he wanted to meet me, and we talked. And uh, I asked him, how you have prepared yourself uh, to be the next president of China in these moments? And he told me something that was very important for me. He said, I have visited in the year before 190 countries. The United Nations is about that size. So he had visited uh, and known all the people that which, uh, with whom we were to, to drill the following years. Second example, the Prime Minister of the uh, UK, Mr. Madame May, she's now Prime Minister, and uh, the first time he visited China was when the meeting of the G7 took place in China. So never had been any idea of, of traveling, knowing people, etc. having a, I mean, a, a completely different approach. I think that Mr. Xi is a strategic man, and Madame May was a very tactical at that time. And this is the difference. <clears throat> That's a beautiful example. It sort of means acting without a vision of where you're going. I think that is a basic thing yeah. for anybody who has some sense of responsibility or is acting in a place of responsibility. Yeah. If you know his history, he's worked with all kinds of conflicts. You've been all over the world with conflicts. What keeps you inspired and not discouraged? Well, I have a, I have a, a biography which is uh, uh, complicated or complex. Uh, believe it or not, I, my first uh, incarnation was a professor of theoretical physics, and I have a chair of theoretical physics. I was educated in the United States, I have a PhD from the United States, and I returned to Spain. And I returned to Spain at a very uh, interesting moment. It's the moment in which uh, the dictatorship was about to end. And uh, at the moment that it, uh, the dictatorship then, Franco died, uh, it was a movement in which a democracy has to return. And everybody f was called for duty. And uh, I was called for duty, and, uh, and I took it. I took the responsibility of help at that moment. 
and uh, I was uh, in the commission that wrote the constitution, then I get engaged on that, and, and from the things which I never thought they would happen to me, I ended up being the Minister of Education and Science, and, and you, you name it after that. That uh, doesn't mean that I've cut off completely with science. My best friends are scientists. I read the science and, uh, uh, and all these news uh, uh, magazines which are important on science. And I think that to me has been a very helpful uh, background to have this uh, mentality of scientific thinking. Uh, scientific thinking, scientific approaching to problems. Um, and I'm very, very, very hef uh, happy that I had that possibility uh, before going into politics. I think politics is a, such a complicated thing, really. You take it seriously, that the more you have known before, the better. And would you describe yourself as a risk taker in this incredible history of contributing to the world? Yes, but non trop of an article. Uh, uh, you have to be a risk taker, but uh, with common sense. But yes, if the question is if, if I am a risk taker, I will say yes. Yeah. And what in your mind makes a strategy successful? Because you heard me speak about the overemphasis on success and the underemphasis on putting effort into doing something. What in your mind makes someone or a team successful? Well, when you have an objective and you are successful, you achieve that objective. Let me, let me put a example, two example, one example. If I had the obligation or had the mandate to get an agreement with the Russians at the time, Boris Yeltsin and his prime minister, uh, Yevgeny Primakov, to get an agreement before the first enlargement of NATO to have an agreement with Russia. It was a very difficult thing. It was almost impossible, but it was done. And we were very hard. I prepared myself very much. I understood all the problems that Russia had at that time. Remember, there was the fall in the Berlin Wall, uh, the, the fragmentation of the Soviet Union, the reunification of Germany. It was a very complicated moment. And the Russians were uh, certainly depressed. And uh, when you have to negotiate with somebody which is depressed, you have to, to be very careful not to uh, let him think that you are taking advantage of him. And uh, so to elevate him first, uh, you have to, to put it at the same level that you are. Yeah. And, and, and when you do that, uh, it's much better the negotiation. And for me, it was a very, very interesting the reaction. I, I, I let tell you how it was. I, we were in a dacha outside the uh, uh, and outside the skirts of, of, of Moscow, and it was snowing, dramatically snowing. It was the 22nd of January. And uh, we entered into the conversation, and uh, we created very rapidly a sentiment of, 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 uh, of understanding, of trust, very rapidly. In the first uh, 10 minutes when I did my first uh, introductory remarks, and he replied, and uh, we drank a little bit of vodka, or more than a little bit of vodka, and uh, uh, immediately I noticed that he was willing to talk. And I told him, why don't we go for a walk? And he said, okay. And then he went for a walk, snowing, no bodyguards, the two, only the two of us. And, uh, and we, Really, in an hour and a half of walking under the snow, we put the red lines of everybody. He knew what was my red lines. I knew what were the red lines. And I thought uh, to myself, and I told him, Eugenie, we are going to get an agreement. And in three months later, by the month of May, we signed the agreement. But uh, it, it was very important to put myself in his position, 
and put it, he himself in mind. And uh, remember that uh, it is very important when you are negotiating that the other has to be taken very seriously. And he has to have the sentiment that you are taking him seriously. And uh, uh, at that time, the Russian leaders had the sentiment that they were not being taken seriously. Yeah. And that uh, produced a sentiment of, 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 of uh, trust that uh, allowed us to go to all the way to the end. Could we give you a round of applause for that behavior? Isn't that amazing? Thank you. <laughs> it's, would you say that that walk, you had a bond with him? You created a bond? I created a friendship. Yeah. And uh, really, uh, I, I had a sentiment, dramatic sentiment, the day we signed, we signed, then we also the the, the ceremony, but uh, when we were alone, I mean, uh, he embraced me, and I saw his arms. He was crying. Yeah. For him was a fantastic uh, achievement. For him, yeah. It was a sentiment. All the Russians are very sentimental, yeah. as you know, very much. And all the Spaniards are very sentimental. So we were a, <laughs> a mixture of sentimentality together, and uh, but it was very moving. Really, for me, it's not something unforgettable. Yeah. And never again that happened. Yeah. Again, it is terrible to see how the relationship between Europe, uh, the United States, and Russia have deteriorated uh, from a possibility that it was there uh, around that agreement. Do you think that behavior was part of your person effect? You, you are a special person. You have a special way of connecting. Do you see that as part of your person effect? I know you're very humble. Well, I am He's not going One of the most yeah. humble men I've met. Well, well you have met very, very few. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think that uh, you have to deal with people as people. I mean, uh, I, let me allow me to say this. I have a tendency to love people. And, um, when you have this sentiment that people are people and you have to, I mean, if you love them in a way, it's, uh, it's much easier. But all the examples you have given before of teams and all that, it can be resumed in a very, in a very simple a team. Uh, it's a place or a grouping in which uh, people trust each other. Yeah. And uh, who is the leader? The leader is the one they accept as a leader. Yeah. The leader, what is a leader? The leader, by definition, is somebody which is accepted as a leader. Can I put the fish on the table that sometimes doctors do not create that trust? Most do, but sometimes doctors can have so much pain or have been through that they, they no longer are able to bond or connect. Well, I have not had that experience. Good. I have been very lucky. I know very well, personally, what you have been talking about. And I have felt a sense of uh, care. Yeah. Fantastic that is, with teams, yeah. the whole team from yeah. the... Generally, that's what happens. What, what I know from training doctors is that some are unable to really keep connecting and keep bonding, that they have a kind of person effect of aloofness they not perceived as deeply caring. But we know doctors have a natural secure base. People want to naturally trust a doctor. Right. And some are produce behavior that doesn't make, it, make them trustable. And I think that's one lesson for transplantation doctors is that they really have to understand human pain and really be there as a full secure base, uh, as we heard described. Yeah, well, what you have said is... Uh... Now, on a different subject, uh, Loss and crucibles and painful events, mistakes, have been found to be one of the most important things in shaping a leader. Are there any particular losses or mistakes or hurtful things in your life that shaped you and who you are as a leader? Yes, many. But the most important one was uh, the moment in which we were engaged in the Balkans 
remember that the Balkans was the first war that uh, took place in the in the territory of the Europeans, of the European Union, or in Europe as a whole. And uh, it was a catastrophe to see how things came back from the end of the, of the First World War and how to resolve that problem and how difficult it is, how tenacious you have to be, tenacious, because uh, you think that the, the hatred, which is accumulated uh, for identity reasons, uh, religions, etc., is very difficult to get it out. Uh, it requires a long, long, long time, a long, long time of dedication. Don't think that the problem is solved, because it's not solved. It has to be continued, taken care of, etc. Et Take the examples of, uh, of uh, Serbia or uh, Macedonia or uh, the countries uh, that today uh, still they have not completely normalized their lives. And we are talking about events that took place uh, 30 years ago or 20 years ago. So it's very difficult to, to, to I mean, to, it's very difficult to, it's very easy to think that the problem is solved. And the problem is not completely solved yet. There's still a fish. You have to, to continue working and not, uh, not cutting off. Uh, well, this is, I mean, the, the checklist philosophy, solve, 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 solve everything. It's a mistake. Yeah. It's not a checklist. It's, it's something much deeper. It's much a human beings connecting to human no beings. No doubt about that. Yeah. This is one of the things about leadership is that many people think it's a set of techniques. There are styles, etc. But it's people leading people. It's the person leading people. And the day leaders lose their humanness and the ability to connect to a human, they lose their power of influencing. In the spirit of this conference, uh, in this world of transplantation, what would be the lessons you would want the doctors here to understand what you've learned about leadership? Well, I, I, I think that uh, something that has been said by just about everybody uh, that has spoken while I was here, I think that uh, for a doctor, uh, a doctor has to be, to me, somebody with uh, with uh, positiveness. I mean, uh, you, you have to be a positive personality. After all, the, uh, you are giving hope. You are. So I think that, that, that to have the sentiment of being a, a little bit cheerful, uh, as you said, and then everybody has said, I think that this is a very good attitude. And uh, I appreciate it very much, uh, very much. In moments of difficulty, and I had some, uh, a doctor which is uh, optimistic, I would not, not naive, he cannot be naive, but optimistic, yeah. I think is fundamental for a patient. I mean, that is what in my personal experience, uh, yeah. really. We, being a student of dialogue, and especially dialogue from hostage negotiations over the hundreds I've been involved with, we know words can kill. Words can either inspire or they can demotivate. And when often the person effect, the, word, the person is not aware of the negative impact their words are going to have, like with sarcasm or jokes, etc. One last question, and this has been fascinating. I wish we had a lot more time. What do you see for yourself in the future? What are your dreams or what do you hope <coughs> for in the future? Well, I, I <laughs> what do I expect? He said I could be very let, spontaneous. Let me, let me say very, 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 very frank. Let me, let me take three words. <coughs> Cooperation, confrontation, competition. <coughs> the three words, uh, are very important in our everyday life. We all have to compete. We have to compete with norms which are fair, etc. But the competition is part of our life. But the other two, confrontation of cooperation, are up to us. And I think which uh, my concern today is that uh, from a moment uh, in history, recent history, in which we thought that cooperation was winning because the type of problems we have 
could not be solved without cooperation. Nobody alone can solve them. I am very worried today that uh, the, from confrontation to cooperation, this continue, we are moving into the wrong direction. And uh, if you read for, a, I mean, think for a moment last week, last week with the General Assembly of the United Nations, and it was a long time without having heard in the United Nations such a strong phrases against countries against countries, really a loss of the sense of cooperation. And that for me is a very dramatic uh, moment. So if we do not change rapidly and recuper recuperate the sense of cooperation and continues in this movement nothing versus confrontation, I think we are going to make mistakes which will pay very dear. Uh, very seriously. So, um, out of these three words, we have to underline cooperation. Competition always will be some kind of competition, but cooperation is absolutely necessary. And uh, that has to do, uh, has to do with uh, respect for the others. You can have to respect China, you have to respect uh, India, you have to respect Bangladesh, you have to respe respect everybody and deal with them as, as, as important entities with whom you have to cooperate, because otherwise you cannot resolve the problems of the, of, the, of the times in which you are living. And we are living in such a complicated moment in which the public goods, the, public, the global public goods, climate, water, illnesses, etc., all these things, somebody had to provide the solution to this problem. And with confrontation, we will not create a solution to this problem. Yeah. Um, so the cooperation has to come back. And for that, we need leaders ready to cooperate, which is something that uh, I have my doubts that the three, four, five more important leaders, they are in that sentiment today, in, the, in that wavelength today. And it's very important, which is taking place in the United States, for instance. Um, uh, the, the United States is the number one country economically, militarily, etc. And um, I don't think uh, we have at this point in time a leadership which is uh, solid enough to cooperate. Yeah. Leadership is often described as a serving behavior. You have to be get above your ego and you're serving the public good. You care about the public good, and you've said it very well, this idea of connecting. One of the great things about leaders is to develop wisdom over time. I think you have a lot of wisdom. I wish there were some leaders around the world who would give you a call and seek you out as a mentor and share your wisdom with them. Thank you very much, Dr. Very much. How about a wrap, big round of applause. Thank you for your wisdom.